Welcome back. The president has challenged Nigerian engineers on the continued blowing up of oil pipelines in the Niger Delta, asking them to ensure their expertise is not used to further the course of the militants in the region. According to the president, Muhammad Buhari, those blowing up oil pipelines in the region are not ordinary Nigerians, but experts with engineering knowledge. The president made this remark after his investiture as the grand patron of the Nigerian Academy of Engineering at the presidential villa Abuja, promising to work with them in developing Nigeria's infrastructure. If I go on the negative side of those who are being misused, how can an ordinary Nigerian go into the, uh, into the sea, say 70 kilometers or more, go down two meters and below an installation? That cannot be done by ordinary uh, Nigerians. So I hope you will appeal to your colleagues uh, to make sure that uh, what we have built, uh, they should just as they guard it, whether they are working under multinationals or they are working uh, for, for, for the government. Where I served, we found it cost effective to use Nigerian engineers and their capacity to learn, you know, and do the job. Uh, you can see the, the project. We used here four refineries. We used to refine Nigerian crude 400,000 barrels a day. At our time, we used to search for our home market and export 100,000 barrels a day of refined products. By the time I came back in this world, <laughs> none of the refineries <laughs> was working efficiently. And you Nigeria's President Muhammad Buhari, it does appear that the last has not been heard about a series of allegations against the River State Police Command of uh, plotting to rig the legislative rerun elections in River State. This time, Governor Yesam Wike has vowed to release the audiovisual footage of the Commissioner of Police in River State plotting with politicians to rig the December 10th rerun election. Our correspondent Imalu Rui reports. This is a general hospital in Buguma, in a Saritoru local government area of River State, looking a shadow of itself due to its state of disrepair since it was first built over 35 years ago. The situation is no different in Abonima, in a Kukutoru local government area. And now, Governor Yesom Wike and his team, besieged by a crowd of supporters, are here to flag off the reconstruction of the hospitals. Some of the structures are so bad that they will need to be pulled down. The quarters are so dilapidated, the wards are so bad, and coming to rehabilitate this hospital today is a blessing to the people of Puguma. Governor Yesom Wike believes the reconstruction project is long overdue. If you look at the, the nature of that hospital, you will cry. It's not to build new structures. It's to maintain the ones that you have. Assuming anything happens there, before you from here to Potaka, is it today? So we are bringing her back to the people. Then, in what seems like a twist of event, the governor holds up a CD which, according to him, contains incriminating evidence against the police in the run-up to the December polls. Before they start, we are, we are already in front. All their plans, CP, and then they plan how they will take the election. Look at it here. The whole world will know through this reverse reward uh, whether Nigeria are just a while with the play or they want to do the right thing. It will be interesting to see if the governor will make true threats and the reaction of those accused. Until then, fingers remain crossed to see just what is next in the build-up to the rerun election in the state, which has recorded a lot of drama from the of the major parties in the state. Emmanuel Iri, Channels Television News. In the meantime, the Commissioner of Police in River State, Mr. Francis Odessonia, appears not prepared to join issues with the state governor over the latest allegations leveled against him. Mr. Odessonia told Channels Television that the allegations by Governor Wike against him are futuristic 
and he would rather wait for the governor to make good his threat by playing the video of his alleged meeting with politicians to the public. The Rural State Police Chief added that for now he will concentrate on the preparations ahead of the poll to ensure there is law and order and does not want to be distracted from his duties. Well, it's time now for business news on the News at 10 with Emana Amawe. You first. First Bank. Many thanks for staying with us. Welcome to Business News. The Lagos State Governor, Mr. Akemu Miambode, has presented the 2017 budget proposal to the House of Assembly. The budget, totaling 813 billion naira, is christened the Golden Jubilee Budget. The sum of 300.535 billion naira is earmarked for recurrent expenditure, while 512.464 billion naira would be dedicated to capital expenditure. We focus on physical infrastructure. We shall continue to pay due attention to social infrastructure, especially health, education, youth, and social development in 2017. A key focus of the budget for 2017 is road construction, rehabilitation, and maintenance. Our government will focus on roads that will open up the hinterlands, improve connectivity in the state, and reduce travel time. Some of these projects that have been marked for 2017 include the Murtala Mohammed International Airport Road from Oshodi, a Greek Ishao O2 Arepo Road in Ikorodu, Igbe Bobo Phase 2 Bolatinumbu Way in Ikorodu, Ijegu Memorial Phase 2 in Amu Wojo Axis, Okeo Shaw, Araga, Oka in Ekbe. We have maintained a conservative approach in estimating our federal location due to falling oil prices. That was just about $41.98 per barrel as at the time we finalized this budget. However, the state expects an increase in federal allocation through the 13% derivation from oil and gas in 2017. Governor of Lagos State, Akemu Miambode. In the meantime, the Lagos State government is expecting to attract foreign and domestic investments into its agriculture and manufacturing sectors in 2017. The Commissioner for Commerce and Industry, Mr. Rotimi Ogunleye, explains how the Lekki Free Trade Zone has been prepared to accommodate non-oil investments less than six weeks to the new year. And now at the local bowls, Forte All PLC led market sell-offs as the NSC All Share Index depreciated by 0.34%. For details, here's Harriet Agbe. <laughs> Stock prices continued to bleach today on the Nigerian local market on the back of losses posted by oil and gas retailers as well as some tier one banking shares. At the end of trading day, total market value came in lower at 8.68 trillion naira, with the all share index down 0.34% to 25,233.42. Only 88 stocks were traded today, lower than Monday's total of 99 equities. Mobile, University Press, and UAC Property led 10 others on percentage gains. On the other hand, two oil and gas majors, Forte Oil and Owando, led the day's laggards. 511.58 million shares were exchanged in 2,342 deals valued at 1.69 billion naira. Those are the day's trading figures. I'm Harriet Agbini. Thank you, Harriet. And on the global scene, European stocks closed higher today as investors focused on talks between OPEC members and political uncertainty ahead of a key referendum in Italy. And in the U.S., Nasdaq hits record high as stocks rise, while in South Korea, shares retrace losses as President Park offers to step down.
And that's business news tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Emana Amawe. The broadcast continues. You first. First Bank. Nigerian secondary school students have been asked to cultivate a reading and saving culture while pursuing their careers. This is coming from speakers at a career talk forum tagged Beyond School, organized by the Nigerian Breweries PLC in conjunction with the Felix O'Huere Foundation. The forum also provided a financial literacy and personal development program. What could the management of the Nigerian Breweries PLC be up to? as it gets together with students from five secondary schools in Lagos. The 70-year-old company has given the younger generation a sense of hope and a promising future through career guide, financial literacy program, and a saving culture. Uh, number three on the the first, forum tagged Beyond School, a project initiated by the Felix O'Hewer Foundation. In just a few years, one of you some of you will be the ones staying off the like this and addressing other students. But it will only happen on only one condition. And you study hard. And then the project's champion comes up to give the students a pep talk on making a career choice. She emphasizes the need to develop self-discipline, right mentoring, and a reading culture. By knowing what career we're going to do, we choose a job. By knowing if it's a job, we choose the skills, the subject. By working on that, we end up having career. And on a lighter note, the playground is set as the students compete in the game of Monopoly. A winner emerges, cutting away a cash prize of 500,000 naira, while the first runner-up gets 250,000 naira. The teachers also get different prizes. Five schools that are here are schools that we've been working with over years. So generations of the same set of uh, maybe um, SS2, SS3 students, we take them, we discuss them. Sometimes we discuss infrastructure in their schools. Sometimes we bring them to do this financial literacy, career counseling, guidance. The teachers are involved. So it continues and builds and grooms them. That is the idea, to make sure that they keep being reminded of what it is. And if one child gets the spark and becomes an advantage to this country tomorrow. Our job would have been done. It's all about winning with Nigeria. It doesn't matter where you're coming from. As long as you believe in yourself, you can reach your goals. Just focus who you are. With determination, focus and hard work, the students are set to take on future challenges and make an impact in their own world. Next on the news at 10, Nigerian Super Falcons defeat South Africa to secure passage into the finals of the 2016 Africa Women's Championship in Cameroon. That's in sports news. Stay with us.